Bueno. Eh, good afternoon. For me, it's a, a pleasure to present to Rosario Stino, who presented the, uh, her talk, uh, Parental Influences on Perceived to Mexican Adolescent Depression. Uh, she is a research uh, professor at the Center for Research and Higher Studies in Social Anthropology in Mexico City. She received her PhD from the Universidad Degli Studi di Torino, Italy. She research interests are related to family and cancer. Recent publications have focused on parenting changes in the structure and family relations, history of the family, family roles, new tendencies in family formation, and family policy in Mexico chair of the Social Science Section of the Mexican Academy of Science. Please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for being here, and thank you, Olbet, for inviting me to present some of uh, the work we have been doing recently. Um, first of all, I want to introduce Alejandro, who, who is, uh, we, we made the, the, the paper we are going to present today. We have been working in the last year together. And he, is a, uh, he has a master's degree in um, social sciences at the Latin American um, Faculty of Social Science in Mexico City. And, uh, well, uh, we changed the talk because we, initially we were going to talk about uh, guilt induction. But uh, we made some, uh, try some models and, and analysis, and we thought it would be better if we talk about adolescent depression. Um, well, let me introduce to some of uh, some uh, things. Uh, adolescent depression uh, can, as an internalized behavior and its relationship with different family influences has been insufficiently studied, although it has brought very useful information. Uh, the research, uh, we had um, uh, este, Guillermina and all the group uh, who, um, uh, who works at the Na National Institute of Psy Psychiatry. They have been working on many issues uh, about family. And, uh, uh, and I think they have brought, uh, their studies have brought very useful information. Uh, I, I think, I, I uh, you will correct me, and I'm glad that you're here. But, uh, but uh, the works I have reviewed, they focus mainly on aspects on family environment and sociodemographic variables. They, there is a strong focus on vulnerable and, and at risk or at risk groups, and usually uses use samples not statistically representative in the field that I am going to talk about today. And here are some of their works. Uh, what I, we are going to present today is uh, some results about a research we, we made about adolescent social competence and parenting in Mexico. And we made a survey in 2010 in collaboration with other colleagues, colleagues Peterson, Wilson, and Bush. This research was funded by the National Science Foundation. Where my, uh, and <coughs> we, had a, we made a sample of uh, 1,200 uh, statistically representative of adolescents from three regions, north, the north, uh, with the state of Sinaloa and Sonora, the center, Mexico, San Luis Potosí and Hidalgo, and in the south, the states of Chiapas, Oaxaca, and Yucatan. The selecting criteria of the samples, some of the criteria were the, the levels of urbanization, marginalization, and concentration of indigenous population in each state. And this was a research applied face-to-face uh, uh, -face at households to adolescents between 14 and 17 years of age, living with, with their parents or tutors. And parent and con consent, consent was obtained. The, the advantage of this research, I think, is that it's, uh, I think, one of the few uh, researches that uh, has a more statistically representation um, among the population, because uh, even though there have been survey, national surveys in, in, in the area of social health, uh, there are, I think, few which take into account some of the things we are considering in the model. So the objective of, of the paper is to present some results about the influences that some family variables have 
on the development of or not of adolescent depression. Particularly, we examine variables related to sociodemographic aspects, those that can restrict or inhibit its development, and those that can promote it. Based on the results, we point some limitations and questions that need to be addressed in further research. Uh, depression is, can be thought as a multidimensional phenomenon, and it can imply cognitive, emotional aspects, as well as physical, as we have seen before, um, and the long-term psycho-emotional psycho state. These are some aspects, very general, about uh, the, the definitions about depression. Uh, we used to measure the, uh, or to grasp the, this phenomenon through the Kutcher Adolescent Depression Scale uh, with the six items uh, were used to grasp some of the depression features. We ask adolescents if they experienced in the last week feelings of sadness, bad mood, hopelessness, worthlessness, tense, anxious, panic, fatigue, not motivated, harming, or suicidal thoughts. Uh, the scale had a very good reliability. Well, these are statistics. We, I have to talk about this is statistics. Uh, uh, the scales had a very good reliability, uh, this value of alpha Cronbach's alpha, which is very good. And one factor explained 48% of the variance, the variability of the, to, to explain the depression. Based on another method, the, the stratification, the Lenius and Hodge, uh, almost 80% of uh, adolescents reported low and very low per perceived depression. 15% uh, reported high and 5% very high levels of depression. Women reported greater levels. That it, has, it has been pointed out in the literature in health, so in health, uh, uh, mental health uh, problems. And 25 percent high, high, had high and very high uh, levels, and uh, and women had higher, greater levels than boys. They had 16 percent high and very high. So. Um, the, the thing, uh, another advantage of this research is that it, it, it takes into account not only risk groups, but also the population in general, and it, uh, we will see further characteristics. Uh, the theoretical model we used, some of the things we can say now. One, uh, the first thing is that there, uh, we take into account aspects of connectedness in the parent-adolescent relationship and psycho-emotional resources, which can be protective factors that inhibit, the develop, inhibit or hinder the development of depression. They include some parental behaviors, such as support, reasoning, freedom granting, and monitoring. Parental authority, which can be legitimate and expert, we will explain them later. Some psycho-emotional resources, self-esteem, self-efficacy, social initiative and internalized conformity to parental expectations and positive communications. According to the literature, these, these factors could be, t in Western societies, this can prevent uh, or hinder the development of depression. The second the, uh, uh, the, uh, level we took were the variables of conflict. We, we couldn't put them either in, in as hinder factors or Promoter, promoting factors because they, they we will talk conflict can be either way you know, for can work in either way and the third uh, area or dimension that we took into consideration was um, aspects which favor the development of depression we consider some parental behaviors psycho psychological intrusion guilt induction love withdrawal and rejection and punitive uh, uh, and punitive behavior. Some aspects of parental authority, which could be coercive authority, and negative communications. I'm going to explain a little bit some of each of these terms or, or aspects. Uh, refer to connectedness. Uh, connectedness refers to affectionate bonds, enduring forms of mutual influence, and continuing family ties between adolescents and parents. They are aspects of relationships that are neither excessive nor intrusive to the extent that individuality is inhibited. Uh, understood as providing a secure base, 
a, stabili a stabilizing form of control or a primary bond from which healthy forms of autonomy can emerge. Uh, the first aspect of connectedness, the idea is that connectedness protects or hinders the development of depression, is support, parental support. A parental behavior which commun a, a, a parental support could be understood as a parental behavior which communicates to the youth feelings of warmth, affection, and a sense of being valued. It can be expressed by touching, kissing, hugging, praising, approving, encouraging, and spending positive time with adolescents. Establishes a sense of connection or closeness that often has long-term benefit effects. Reinforces adolescent self-trust to function beyond family boundaries. It's very important uh, so adolescents, when they become adults, they can function uh, socially. No? And, um, the second one is parental positive induction or reasoning. This behavior, parental behavior, appeals to the adolescent's concerns for others, their desire to be mature, and their abilities to understand and voluntarily accept the parent's point of view. These are some of the authors who have uh, worked on these issues. Uh, they, it helps adolescents to understand the importance of rules, how their behavior affects others, it communicates respect for adolescents and their abilities to make good decisions and their capacities to voluntarily comply. Granted freedom. This uh, behavior communicates how parents trust adolescents, giving them freedom to move and make things on their own. A parental monitoring or supervision is a moderate form of control and refers to efforts by parents to become aware and manage their teenagers' schedules, peer association activities, and physical whereabouts. The primary role of monitoring prevent the drift of teenagers toward problematic peer relationship risk behavior. Uh, 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 other, um, another um, behavior is, well, this is not the behavior, this is now the dimension of authority. The first were parental behaviors, now there is the, the conception or the perception of the authority. And there are different kinds of authority uh, that we can observe. The first one is the expert authority, which is a perception that parents have credible expertise that is useful for adolescents, or the ability to provide specialized information to teenagers. Both authority dimensions may have greater importance as the young increasingly, I, I think there was some missing. Uh, no. Parental, exp uh, I think there's one, there's one missing. Legitimate authority. Uh, I, I skipped it. Legitimate authority is that the right that uh, adolescents perceive from their parents to, to control or to, to decide for them. It's, it's usually based on social norms. And it, this is very important, the legitimate authority. And both of them... Uh, are seen as um, they, that they may have greater importance as the young increasingly develop autonomous behavior. The other one is uh, now concerned with parental expectations, how parental expectations are internalized. And there was a section which uh, tried to measure this internalized conformity, we, we, uh, it is called. Yeah, and it involves the extent to which adolescents have accepted their parents' attitudes, values, and expectations. A moderate degree of conformity is necessary within families so that effective cooperation and minimum, minim, meaningful social relationships can occur. So it's a, to comply is necessary. Excessive comply can be a problem. Not complying at all also can be a problem. So a moderate comply is necessary. Is what uh, it in this uh, list. And positive communication usually is seen as also a, a protective factor. Uh, they can discuss beliefs and problems. Good uh, uh, parents are good listeners. Uh, they show affection and feelings, uh, get honest answers, understanding others' point of view. All right, now the psycho, personal psycho-emotional resources. 
that could be protected. Self-esteem is uh, logically, uh, one can think that it's important. If one has a good self-esteem, it won't have depression. So um, we, we measure self-esteem using two scales. One is the Rosenberg scale, which is very uh, scale. And the other one is the satisfaction adolescents report about their self-esteem. So uh, the other one is social initiative. How much adolescents uh, participate socially? They ask questions, talk to adults or talk to friends. They uh, cooperate. They um, uh, make activities with others. That, that would be social, active, social initiative. And self-efficacy is how they adjust or how they see themselves as adjusting to their own expectations. If they, if they finish their work, if, they, if, if something is difficult, they try or not, um, things like that. So all the above represent different aspects of the self, personal, social, and its adjustment to function according to personal and social expectations. This could be thought as um, also um, protective factors. Now, conflict. Conflict in, in Western societies has evidence, has shown that most parents and adolescents love and respect each other and do not have fundamental differences in values, beliefs, and attitudes. Instead, parents and adolescents differ most frequently in the area of personal lifestyles, choices, including styles of dress, tastes in music, curfews, and selection of leisure time activities. The, the idea is that there, there is a long tradition in, in sociological and I think in, in psychology also the, that um, conflict is, um, or, or when, when, when there is conflict, there, there is a gap, this idea of the gap between generations. And this idea of the gap between generations has promoted um, the conception that um, differences are they are very strong, and um, connectedness is less uh, frequent, or it becomes uh, weak when adolescents are growing up. So, uh, the new this new this uh, reception uh, sees that adolescents um, try to look for their own development of autonomy, but they also keep uh, a connection, usually with parents. The, the, there is not um, um, a separation, a strong, uh, a drastic separation. Conflict is analyzed then in terms of frequency and severity of arguments. Moderate conflict is viewed as a process that can foster adaptive forms of change within parent-adolescent relationships so that autonomous competent development can occur with young family balance. So conflict is necessary to, 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 to readjust but in, and to the development of autonomy. The, the other dimension is respectiveness. And it signates aspects of interpersonal associations that either arbitrarily or intrusively constrain behavior, apply excessive control, the value of self-expressions, or the autonomy of others, and foster excessive dependency by withholding affection or acting indifferently. One of the be parental behavior is psychological intrusion, which is a form of control where parents' efforts intrude upon the psychological independence and emotional development of adolescents. It invalidates adolescents' feelings, constrains verbal and expression, withdraws love, or attempts to induce guilt by reasoning. This behavior has been linked to internalized form of youthful outcomes such as depression. The, uh, another parental behavior is punitiveness, which is arbitrar arbitrary, arbitrary verbal and physical attempts to influence the behavior and internal qualities of teenagers. They involve the use of excessive force to impose the will of parents without the tempering influence of reason. It varies from nagging, name-calling or yelling to corporal punishment or violence. 
it is also associated with depression. Coercive authority, uh, uh, this is a perception of adolescents about parents' authority, it's a form of potential rather than actual restrictiveness that adolescents attribute to parents. That is, the perception that parents have the potential to bring about adverse consequences for the adolescent. It is a form of control that inhibits the process of individuation. And negative communication, uh, for example, well, this is the, the, the opposite of the positive communication. They are afraid or not confident confident or, or of telling their parents what they, their problems are. Uh, uh, they, there is silence, they hurt through uh, communication, they, uh, there's nagging, insulting, and avoiding. So these are some traits of the negative communication. Well, this is the theory. Now we are going to see later results, but I have to talk first about the methods we use, some of the methods we use to analyze the information. We use the principal component analysis and categorical principal component analysis to identify factors. Uh, the test of Cronbach alphas uh, had very high values uh, in all the scales we use, excepting uh, self-esteem, which is a little bit low. Usually, t uh, the, the convention is to take from point, point 0.7 up is a good reliability. And this is a little bit lower. Uh, for its uh, uh, 0.696 and 0.673. And most scales uh, range from values to, uh, of 0.75 and some of them reach up to 0 0.959. Uh, so they are very reliable. This is important because there is always a question that how we use um, Western... <laughs> Western uh, measures applied to the population, other populations which are not with Western values. And so this reliability is good, which means that it, can, it could be applied to but the results are not the same as in the Western societies, as we will see, some of them at least. We used also, we made bivariate and partial correlation matrices, Bar Bartlett test and Kaiser Mayer Olking to see if the principal component analysis was feasible. And based on the above, we, we made some indexes for each scale, for most of the scales, um, we made indexes. And the, 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 the model, the most important model we applied was hierarchical regression models. Um, we, it, it, we use that to get the, the impact or influence of independent variables on the depression. Considering gender, gender differences of parents and adolescents, we made four models, which are a girl mother, girl father, boy mother, and boy father, these relationships. And we use four steps to include the following group of variables. First one is sociodemographic, which are the control variables then um, in, in inhibited or those variables that hinder uh, depression, which are uh, those we, we talk about uh, in the connectedness dimension, conflict, and promoting variables uh, related to restrictiveness. The results. Uh, <laughs> I am going to present some tables, not very much, but very long. Uh, the first and second, the, the table, tables one and two present the regression models for girls and boys. In the first column, we present the, well, I can skip that, some, some values that we had to take uh, into account. Um, uh, well, the, the, the second one, I think it would be, we present the derivative on, their sta on standardized b-values. The derivative, which gives us a precise estimate about how much when the independent variable uh, changes in one unit, increases or decreases of certain value, the dependent variable, depression. So uh, we will see it in the table. This measure is useful because it allows us to have a more precise estimate, but it is not uh, when we want to know which variable weighs more and has a significant impact because each variable can have a different measure. So what we are, uh, we are going to pay more attention to the third column, which is the standardized B. 
uh, or beta, beta uh, represented in the th uh, third column. And this allows us to observe which variable or variables weigh more since it standardizes the measures of the variable so that we can establish which has or have more impact or significance. The, other, the, the, the second column tells us how much when one unit change in the independent variable, how much the dependent variable changes. This is a, a more es, a preci precise measure. This beta standardized tells us the impact or significance, which has more impact or significance on the depression. And, it, well, <laughs> I told you, this is the, the, the first step of the regression model. And we included all these uh, control variables which refer to sociodemographic um, uh, aspects. And the only one in the model, the, it's referred to the model uh, for girls. The relationship between the girl with the mother and the, the perception of the relationship with the father. The only, the, the only variable that has that is significant or that has an impact on depression is the number of siblings. It's, uh, this is an important variable for regarding the mother, the, with the relationship with the mother. In the relationship with the father, there is no control variable which has an important, which has an impact on depression. The second model, uh, let me tell you first, uh, before I, I forgot to tell you, the re hierarchical regression models are good for this kind of research because it is uh, based on previous research and it has a conceptual um, ground uh, or, or it's based on conceptual and evident, evidence uh, ground. So uh, that's one point. And the other point is that each time we put, um, in each step, we put the, uh, the order of the steps, the hierarchy, is based on the importance of, conceptual, of conceptualization. So, rules are just are taken into account because we have to control that they don't uh, bias the, infor the, inter the information. But then we have to, the, the less important to the most factors we think have an impact on depression. So the control variables here, we see that they're, they're, they're not very important. Uh, the, second part, the second step, which are the restricting or hindering the variables which are uh, hindering uh, depression, in the mother's model is self-esteem, which is uh, when there is um, when there is more self-esteem, there is less depression because the sign is negative, as you see, is a minus 0 0.139. So it's inverse the, the relationship. The other um, um, variable is internalized conformity, social initiative. Uh, uh, internalized conformity is also has also that uh, uh, same direction and social initiative too. I, I, I am not going to um, uh, give now more the, 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 synth the synthesis of the, uh, the the model, the interpretation. We will see it later, but the, I, I just want you to see the, all the variables we took into account and which ones have more impact. On the father's model. The, the variable which is more important is legitimate authority. And it's interesting that when is, there is more legitimate authority, there is more depression. And self-esteem also is important in the opposite way, and social initiative too. The, uh, the, the last two steps, one is conflict. Conflict doesn't seem to be important for girls. To, to have an impact on depression. And in the promoting uh, variables, we see that um, negative communication is very important and, uh, in, with their mothers, and coercive authority and, positive, and negative communication is very important with their fathers. Now, the, regarding the boys, 
the, in the control variables, we see that only the condition of studying and, at, and working at the same time. Remember that there are boys from 14 to 17 years old, but in Mexico, there's a lot of population within that, uh, uh, that age which, who works and study at the same time. So when there is a condition of studying and working, uh, there is a, it has an impact on, on depression, either uh, also with mothers and with fathers. Uh, regarding the uh, variables which uh, rest uh, restrict depression, we have parental support. We will talk more about this later, which is something that surprised us. We didn't expect the, this result, how more support promotes depression. Uh, also, expert authority has an impact in a negative sense. Uh, and uh, if, if, uh, for the fathers, it's legitimate authority who has a, a strong power. Ah, I'm sorry, uh, self-esteem also has a, um, an influence in a negative sense for the mother's model and also for the father's model. And positive communication is important for the father in boys. Well, the conflict, regarding conflict, conflict is also important. For girls, it wasn't important, but for boys, it, it is important in their relationship with either with the mother or the father. And from uh, the variables pr promoting uh, depression, there is only one which has an impact, which is punitive behavior regarding the father. Well, now let's see some of this synth uh, synthesis and how can we uh, uh, describe them. Table one presents then the results regarding the model for girls, as we saw. We can observe that in the relationship with their mothers, the factors that hinder the depression are greater self-esteem, satisfaction, regarding satisfaction, and when there is more internalized conformity to the mother's expectations. Instead, depression increases when there are more siblings, more social initiative, and when there is more negative communication. So, uh, in the first model, we can expect that uh, greater self-esteem, yes, is a protective factor. That's okay, we could say, with the theory. Um, internalized conformity, it also could be explained uh, that um, protects in some way uh, the emergence of depression. But depression increases with more siblings. That also could be understood because mothers don't have enough time to, to spend time with each of the children, quality time. Or we could give more explanations about that, but that's logical. But which is not very logical is social initiative because if the uh, girls participate more in social contexts, they develop depression. And uh, well, we will, uh, uh, there, there could be some explanations about this. I don't know, we have to make more analysis as we will see later, but a uh, social initiative could be, could, could um, maybe confront the girls with their mothers also because uh, they, they could uh, uh, face more opportunities to, to develop and maybe in their homes they don't find those conditions w uh, regarding the mother. Also, when there is negative communication, it's logical that it would uh, promote uh, depression. If there is a bad communication, that, that's more logical. In the relationship with the father, depression in girls is hindered by greater self-esteem which is also uh, understood, more positive communication, and when, when there is more coercive authority. I think this is interesting, because coercive, uh, maybe it could mean that uh, girls are asked to behave, which is a, a very uh, extended trait in Mexican society. We had a, a long culture about uh, just behaving or complying without reasoning or without... Um, uh, just comply to the rules, to the norms, and sometimes there is little connection in, in, in the relationship. So this could be a, a coercive authority, could be um, a way 
to make girls to comply. And, the, and that could, um, since there is, a, there is a social environment which promotes this form of, behave, of behaving and obedience, obedience, the coercive authority could be more common. Instead, it is promoted by reasoning, more legitimate authority, greater social initiative, and greater negative communication. Uh, it, it, this is also shocking, which I put in, in the, where uh, I put it in red is that it's not very. We have to look for more explanations because it's not uh, very logical, or uh, we have to make maybe also more tests. But reasoning usually is, is taken as a way of of uh, making um, uh, self-regulation more uh, to develop self-regulation. No? It's uh, Reason, I think it's one of the important uh, traits that it has. And social initiative, we talked about it, is um, also, yeah, and girls were, were, were had very high, uh, uh, it was higher in girls than in boys. So it's, that is interesting. So negative communication also could be explained in this model as, as that promotes uh, depression. Yes. See. The, the, regarding the boys, in the mother's relationship, uh, the variables that must uh, that most impact or hindering uh, the development of depression are when there is more expert authority and more self-esteem. Expert authority is the, as you remember, the, the, the adolescents perceive parents and having useful information as guiding figures. So that, that could help to, to, for he, hindering depression. Instead, the factors that promote uh, its development are being in the condition of studying and working, receiving more support. This is a thing we didn't expect. How, we, how if mothers give more support, how they could develop um, depression. Uh, one thing I was, uh, we, uh, we were talking about, Alejandro and I, is that uh, maybe if uh, in, a, in a context where uh, gender, culture, and differences are very strong, and machismo and all these things, and uh, masculine culture is very strong, have the support of the mother is not very well, or very well experienced by boys on the one hand. And on the other hand, they are also growing up, they are becoming men, and maybe they feel bad of having the support of mothers. Uh, but this is a thing that is just an, an hypothesis that we have to prove in further research. In the perceptions of the relationship with the, with the father, greater self-esteem, uh, satisfaction, and more positive communication are the variables that have a significant impact on hindering depression. Instead, the variables that promote it are being in the condition of studying and working, more legitimate authority, more intensity in conflicts, and more punitive behavior. All this is more or less reasonable or feasible to understand. The, uh, there is one thing I forgot to say, is that legitimate authority in the, in the, th in the theory I, de I just de developed, um, it is conceived as a legitimate, a moral, like a moral um, authority based on connection. It's legitimate not only on norms, but also on moral um, appreciations or, or, or perceptions. The thing is that it, legitimate authority, in, in some of the cases, as we saw, is, 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 a, is a promoting factor. So we can say that maybe it doesn't have the moral connectedness, but it has more um, uh, social and uh, more distanced uh, effect uh, for adolescents. I don't know if I explain my... It's because I tell you that you have to do this. No? It, it, there is a no moral connection on that. So maybe, and it's legitimate because uh, adolescents perceive that as legitimate, but there is not this connection uh, uh, with them. So I think also, the, well, all this has to be, uh, we have to think more about all, but this is a, 
something that we can try to um, analyze more. Well, there's another thing uh, we can say about the results. It's uh, about the, explain, the models explaining power. The, the table, table three uh, shows the percentages of the explained variance in each step of the regression. And we can observe also that all the variables included in the model explain only among 6 to 15% of the variability of depression index, which implies that there are many other relevant factors that should be taken into account. So if you see it's a little percentage, it, well, it, one could say it's very little, but it's not little really, because if you, if you think that there are many other factors influencing it's a reasonable um, uh, info data, and it's acceptable also because the models consider the parents in a separate ways. So we consider model uh, regarding the father and the mother regarding the father. If we take them both, maybe the variance will increase. So the, the power of the explanation would be stronger. But either way, uh, I think even if it's low, it tells us a lot. It tells us a lot of things about depression and their relationship with parents. This is a table. Uh, if you see in the in the step one, we have to divide in 100. So the variance is for the first step is 3.1 percent, 3.4, and so on. And if you see the, the final, the accumulated variance is 16.9 and so on. Uh, let me tell you some about this. In the first step, for example, where sociodemographic variables were included, we can observe that explained variances go from 3 to 4.3% in the models for girls and from 3.1 to 3.4 for boys. However, it outstands that the variables introduced in the second step, which hypothetically represent in our conceptual framework those variables that hinder depression were the ones that increased most the explaining power of the models. This is particularly true for the father's model for boys, 7.4, I'm going to go back to the um, table, and the father's and mother's models for girls, 6.5 and 9.2. It is also worth to mention that the fourth step referred to the variables that would promote depression shows the smallest values of explained variance in the mother's model for boys. And this means that these variables do not have a significant weight in the explanation. So going back to the table, if you see the second step have the, has the highest uh, amount of varying, explained variance. These are the variables which more, 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 most <laughs> contribute to the, 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 the problem. Um, that me, those are the variables related to connectedness, if you remember. The, the fourth the four step are the variables uh, related to restrictiveness. So the ones that could, uh, can explain or explain more are the connectedness those variables. And we have to think also more about all these results to see what are the consequences of all this. Um, well, just to, we have many doubts and I, I am hoping that you can raise uh, doubts and criticisms <laughs> so we can think more about this. But two concluding remarks we can say is that considering table three, we can say that variables related to connectedness and personal psycho-emotional resources that hinder depression have a higher significance and explaining power. And second, variables that promote depression, such as maternal support for boys, father's induction of, of reasoning for girls, and social initiative for girls, deserve more analysis since they seem contrary or contraintuitive. Contraintuitive? Contraintuitive. Uh -huh. Uh, to the conceptual framework. We have to, this is also, I think, um, uh, it could be uh, shocking, the result, but we have to think about the culture, uh, Mexican culture, and many other factors that uh, are playing no, in, in this phenomenon. Well, thank you very much.
as I understand, maybe I don't understand, but you're saying that the social demographic variables are not important to developing depression? Now my, my question goes to your sample, because the, the regions you selected are very different economical aspects.
sorry, I think this is probably just reflecting that, that I missed something you said, but you were talking about um, depression in relation to uh, uh, adolescent depression in relation to the mother and an adolescent depression in relation to the father. And um, I was missing, um, I'm, not, it's not, I'm not clear on what that means, the term depression in relation to a parent. Is that just a way of talking about um, the factors that cause depression? So you know, relation, uh, depression in relation to the mother is just a way of talking about factors concerning the mother which influence the depression. Okay, I see. Uh, but, but one of the factors um, was uh, self-esteem. Uh, but I don't see, um, I mean, I, I, t I take you're talking about the adolescent self-esteem, right? So how, how does self-esteem, how's that indexed in relation to either the mother or the father? I mean, that doesn't that, isn't one just, doesn't one just have self-esteem or not have self-esteem rather than have, have self-esteem in relation to the mother or the father? Is the, is the, the self, uh, I, I think, I know, I think I, I, I know what are you asking, and I have doubts in that, because uh, this is a, re, a report, as I said, perceived reported uh, self-esteem regarding the mother, the re, in, the, in his or her relationship with the mother, but the self-esteem also regarded with the father. And the, uh, here are not the, the, which aspects specifically are taking into account for the mother and for the father. It's just the reported self-esteem, they say, from regarding the mother or the father. But uh, maybe we should take into account both of them, both parents, to see the, the self-esteem they report. Is that your, your, what you're... Yes. 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 Thanks. Uh, that, that was really fascinating stuff. Um, and I, I don't know anything about the, the area because I've... I, I, do philosophy, but um, there's an interesting uh, and, and pretty depressing um, phenomenon in philosophy, the, the, the significant gender imbalance. I mean, um, from round about, in the UK, around about 50% of uh, undergraduate students are women, then, then I think at masters and PhD level it goes round about 22, 23, and in the profession it's about, I don't know, 15. Um, now I wonder if this is right, whether that might be something of an explanation as to why women don't continue in a subject like philosophy where there's massive emphasis, usually emphasis because the teachers are male, on reasoning. Um, and if, if in relation to the father's model that, that girls get depressed when, um, uh, that, no, their they're, they're depress depression is lessened with coercive authority but it's increased if they are pushed to reason, um, then, then philosophy might depress women. Is, 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 would, would, my, would, would that be a possible explanation for why there's a significant drop-off in um, the number of women studying. They start in first year studying it and then there's just a drop-off that, that it's actually increasing depression in female undergraduate students, if this is right. Thank you for all the questions and, and this is very difficult to answer and very interesting but very difficult. I have thought that uh, uh, but this is speculation really and based on, on the few studies because there are a few studies really made in Mexico about all this area. Quantitative, there are, uh, this work they, they have made in the National Institute of Psychiatry, but uh, in terms of sociological and cultural anthropology and all these things, you can, uh, there are very little, little qualitative studies. But 
there is one thing that I have uh, seen in the literature I have reviewed, and is that obedience has been a very strong feature in Mexican culture. Obedience, just to comply. So, and, and also that, um, and I have seen it in the, uh, also in my own experience, that, and it has been reported also in other studies, that girls, for example, are in, in um, well, boys are, uh, from mothers, are, uh, are pushed or triggered to develop their own autonomy, to study more, to, to get higher levels of education and to get better works. They, they, when they are at home, they, 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 women have to serve them and things like that, which is a cultural trait. And, and so I think that a consequence is that for girls, um, since they don't have to uh, function or are not expected to function as much in social worlds, education, working, you know, uh, reasoning is not very important for, for, in, uh, for parents in um, instilling girls all these values and behaviors as, as they do with men. So uh, uh, that, I think that could be a possible explanation of that. And, um, but we have to make more, I think, more research in, in, the, in this area. for the talk. First, I have to respond uh, with due respect to my colleague who just asked uh, the question uh, by the way. I, I, I think the idea that female attrition in any academic field is a function of some flaw with women like they don't like reasoning is an absolutely pernicious and horrible hypothesis. And given the overwhelming evidence for gender bias in the academy and in certain fields, in particular philosophy, is a horrible case. The idea that we need to appeal to some defect in <laughs> it depresses women to be treated badly, to be not taken seriously, to have their views denigrated. We have enough explanation. We don't need to appeal to some idea that women are made unhappy by, by reasoning or something like that. I just, there's a, uh, okay. <laughs> I mean, the other, the other other pressures too, like authoritarianism, that that could be brought in as well. So the focusing on reasoning, I don't know. I, it's a changing in philosophy too. It's this is also a Mexican sample. We don't know it's true globally. So I just want to caution again, since it's a public statement of I think a, a, a pernicious and false hypothesis. I just want to state that publicly. So I'm sorry. <laughs> I go, I don't, and I know you didn't mean it to. The, so forgive, for, forgive me for that. Um, Button push, uh, but a related question. I mean, I, one of the things that I thought came out interestingly in your summary slides, especially when you talked about things like gender roles within within this sample, is that a lot of the findings you, you're reporting on on correlates of depression, which are extremely interesting. Just the idea that there are different correlates of depression in different populations is a very very important. But they seem to be summar maybe uh, it's a question, can they be summarized by the statement that depression is likely to arise when there is um, a self-model, an idea of what kind of person and role you want to be or, or, or live, and the reality under which you're, you're living. So is there a broad generalization that can emerge from this that our, when our, our self-models don't align with reality, that makes us depressed? And if that's true, then it becomes a template for thinking about not only gender differences, but individual differences. Because for instance, there might be people who are very politically conservative, who like authoritarian contexts, who feel more depressed when they, when they have too much freedom or things like that. So we, we can start to, at a very, very local level, and for clinical applications, I imagine this is relevant, finding out what a person wants to be, how they want to live, and using that as the as the sort of tool for understanding where their life could be improved. Thank you. Yes, thank you for, for, for the comments. And, and, and uh, yes, I think it, uh, the, <laughs> I am uh, I'm short. <laughs> uh, the, I think it, um, you, you're right. I, and in fact, I think. Uh, 
well, you are in the field and you're experts in philosophy, and I think you know all this literature, but one of the, the contemporary approaches to, to study uh, parenting and self-development is uh, self-regulation. Uh, uh, before there were uh, approaches which put more attention on fathers towards children, children towards fathers, and, and it was a mutual influence, and I think it still holds in a, in a certain way. But each, um, it's becoming more important also to consider self-development. And I think the, mo the, the interesting thing in adolescence is that there's a, it is a stage where they can develop self-regulation. Self they, if they receive the resources coming from the family or the school and from other environments, that uh, allows them to build their own self-regulating mechanisms to adjust or adapt to, to social environments and personal environments. So I think you're right. And regarding the, the question about uh, women, uh, I, I think we gender gender uh, approaches are very important to promote and to make more advocacy towards uh, making women more uh, accessible to all these things because parents, for example, still it's common to think that women do not, do, uh, they don't have to go to school or it's more important that go boys go to school than girls and they receive more, more attention in their development than girls. And that's a handicap really because if you are expecting just for women to comply without giving them any tools to reason and to develop reasoning because reasoning, as you know, has a lot of consequences in developing cognitive abilities, emotional abilities, conflict resolution, and many things. Uh, it's uh, very important. It's a handicap for girls and um, for boys is more uh, accessible. Well, thank you very much. I found it really interesting. So I was wondering about the relationship between self-esteem and social initiative. Because I really thought they were linked. Like, the more self-esteem, the more social initiative. And in the girls' table, it said that self-esteem, of, of course, it uh, prevents depression, whereas social initiative uh, actually increases depression. It's not this table, but the other one. And I, I was really wondering what the relationship is between self-esteem and, and social initiative and whether there's a difference between girls and boys in that particular relationship. Thank you. I don't really have an answer for that because we, we should have, we would have to make more analysis really to see how they they linked they are linked but uh, as um, i'm sorry jesse was saying uh, i think there are many uh, uh, factors that influence differently not only boys and girls but also how they manage their own uh, resources or, or their, own, their own skills so social initiative for example in the in the descriptive uh, information or, or results we have that girls have more initiative usually than boys. We wouldn't expect that, considering all these things that we have been talking about. But they, they, they have more social initiative than boys. So social initiative could, could be a reflection of self-esteem, but not necessarily, because you can have good self-esteem and be more uh, quiet and uh, independent or so maybe that could be one, one thing. Now, I would like to know uh, if you found any difference between the north, the middle, and the south, a significant difference or Hope you don't mention it. Blow up. I'm 
I mean, because it, you said that the South was more rural and the, uh, it was less work I mean, socially. I mean, in a sense that they had more traditional ways of, of um, acting, no? Uh, towards their family, towards their, their parents, no? They're more used to being And then the center, I don't know, but then in the North, they are supposed to be, have more <clears throat> influence from the state and they are more imperialistic and that kind of thing. Do you think that this comparison should explain something? I mean, what is it? How, how the North has a, is more secularized? Than, than the South, and the South has, is where the uh, indigenous population also concentrates. So, and the states we took have a high level of this uh, population. So, I think there, 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 they they um, there we we haven't done the, the analysis, but I think we will find important differences in in the regions. So, I, I want to delve a little bit more on. on these same, uh, same uh, questions regarding the effects that the relationship with the mother or the father, re re depending on if you are a, a boy or a girl, have different uh, uh, impacts. They, they are different. And part of that difference may, may be due to cultural uh, reasons, and that's why it could be very useful to try to stratify the sample in different uh, cultural environments and even doing the same thing or, or maybe maybe there are some studies in other countries similar to this uh, and so also comparing uh, countries that are more uh, prone to, to promote their girls to study or to go to uh, you know professional level studies as compared with others uh, but then there is this this underlying difference uh, which is uh, probably very true as well that Girls relate to the father very different than the way they relate to their mother, uh, and, and vice versa. In the, in the case that uh, I, I was observing this uh, uh, importance of legitimate authority and expert authority, so what is the, what is different per perception it has a, a different value, I, I think, depending if you're a boy or a girl. And uh, I uh, I suspect that some of these differences are going to pervade in every culture and in every, uh, it doesn't matter the social level or so on. But because eventually this goes, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the main component of developing or not the depression is an emotional reaction towards what is happening around me or my own perception. And so those are not so much related to a cultural, uh, you know, a, some of those reactions, am I correct in assuming that some of those reactions are not as much related to the social context than to the um, very nature of the, the, the primeval relationship of, of parents and kids? I don't know. So, so maybe it was not more, it's trying to delve a little bit more. What is your opinion on how much of this is influenced from the social and cultural, and how much of this? Uh, explanation of the, of the variability is due to uh, more natural. And of course, part of variability is, is also genetic. If there's genetic predisposition to, to depression or not. And, uh, to some people than, than others, and that's another, just another level. But do you think this is mainly cultural, or it's mainly, uh, you know, more natural inclination of boys and girls? That's a very interesting question, and thank you for asking that because I, I had I didn't talk about about this thing. Well, this this research was he made here in Mexico, but he, 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 I have contact with other colleagues, American colleagues, basically, with, who have made research in in other countries, China, Kenya, in, uh, Korea, and other cultures. So applying this conception. And they have uh, they have analyzed the results, and if, uh, even though they apply this 
um, criteria or conceptual criteria, there are differences. And, and it's cross-cultural, no? Cross-cultural. So, um, the, the, I think it's fascinating to see how differences, how there are differences in, in the cultures. And for example, in China, in China they have found that, for example, um, um, not, a, not a, a punitive behavior, but yes, a heart or, or a coercive behavior with their children uh, doesn't have the same effects as they have, they, they have in the United States where it is more individualistic and autonomy is very uh, highly valued and things like that. In, in China, autonomy is important but complying with parents is also very important. So there is, they both coexist and th both have uh, a positive impact. For example, in school, you know, and the Chinese are, are very good in school and they, have a, they are very responsible and that is linked to, to this parental behavior, for example, this coercive parental behavior or coercive authority. That's why I thought that here in Mexico, as we have also a, ver a very, coercive culture, we know that, a coercive authority or unlegitimate authority also can have a positive impact on developing or can have also the other impact on um, promoting uh, depression. No? So difference, I think uh, um, my, my, my answer would be more that uh, social environments are very important, more than the, the, there is no uh, normal or natural relationship between parents and children. Depends on the context, depends on values, depends on skills, depends on behaviors and many other things. But uh, I th one thing we can say is that, for example, this, this theory uh, puts a lot of attention in um, uh, for example, appraisal, support, um, these things that we talked about, kissing, hugging, the, uh, this is more Western values. In, 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 in Mexico, we have to see, because for, for example, in, in the research, in the descriptive uh, information, the results, we saw that mothers intuitively, they don't give as much support to the to the children, to their to their. Right? They they don't hug much. They don't they don't. And one one would think they would do that because we are a very Latino culture where mothering is very important and things like that. But it is not common. We have to analyze that information. But but also there is you find also population where this happens. But in the in the results. It didn't appear as as a, it, it, as much. It was more important other things and uh, spending time with adolescents also. I think it has to do more with the, this conception also um, Christian or Catholic conception that uh, you have children, uh, you love your children, but they, it's a little abstract. Children become and and become grown ups by their own. And you just give them the values and things like that that are important, but you don't give them practical um, skills or don't help them to develop these skills that you were talking about. The families, if they turn, if the addict returns to the family, the same family who functions as always, it's difficult to, to modify all these things. So I think it has to do with uh, things like that, but uh, we have to... Um, well, this is just a comment on the question. <laughs> this is a comment to this question. Um, I was wondering if you could think about the emotional responses in this relationship to the relationships.
comment on the comment. Yes, of course. Yeah, of course, of course I agree with you. So everything, all of our reactions, uh, emotional reactions towards the, the behavior of the other are, are culturally influenced. But there is, what I was trying to, try, trying to uh, see, say is if we can try to extract from the data some, some reactions that are more primeval that are more um, inherent to, to the fact of being a woman and, um, and identifying in some areas with your mother and then facing the father and then uh, reaching sexual maturity, uh, you become, uh, well, most people become interested in the other sex. So what is the, what is the uh, perception of the father from the girls and the mother from the boys and so on. So these are probably have a substrate that is more independent of the cultural context and separating them and analyzing them separately, I think it would be useful. You know, understanding that, of course, everything would be social and it's cultural in a sense. Well, we don't, uh, we have to see really if this is the case. Uh, it could be uh, maybe the ide gender identity, maybe in terms of gender identity more than, more than a father and mother a relationship, maybe I think in gender differences. Uh, it's more uh, about As, you, as uh, we said, um, the variance, explained variance, is just uh, between uh, 5 and 15 percent at the most. So there is a wide range of variability that it's not explained by this. The th but the thing that I think it, it's um, good is that we can see that family is important and certain aspects, the, depending on the gender, depending on many other things, are important for or impact, have an impact on developing or not depression. So yes, there are 80% or more that we have explained, genetic, uh, no? many other things that we have to, to analyze. But um, since there is a, um, can say, say, come on. well, a popular, popular idea that the family, make, we are a familistic society here, and family is very important. And we think that family can solve all the problems, and it's not. Family can help in some other, in some things. In many things, it has an important uh, impact. Uh, maybe some definitive impact, but not all uh, can be explained and, and, and or seen through only the family. No? Yes, we consider, we consider in the control variables, we consider all that, the, the, the structure of the family. In the taking 
in consideration different aspects of the structure. For example, if the, the civil status, if they are married or not, if they if they are re, if they are uh, if they work, if both work or not, if uh, in things like that. But the cases, yes, uh, uh, which uh, the ones which were more numerous were. The, the ones we listed on the on the on the variables. No, that's what that's one thing we didn't consider. Yes. Yes. But you know the theory, and I think yeah, I think the, the it's a very little person. I think it's a two percent of the population, so it's very little. It, not, it, because it's little, is I don't mean that it's not important. It's just that it's little, and in statistically, uh, there are many others that also have been considered in in the in previous studies, uh, the wider population. But the the other thing is that there is a misconception about the homoparental families or same-sex marriages and the impact they have on children. There is a lot of research. I know that now there is a. Um, debate about this here, but uh, there is a lot of debate, uh, a lot of research and evidence that shows that it doesn't matter the structure of the family or the form of the family. It can be same-sex marriage, nuclear family, extended family, uh, monoparental family, whatever, uh, step family, and the, the important thing are, the, it, it is more important the relationships they develop, how they build and the quality of relationships than the, the structure itself. That's what's more. There are some studies, eh? There are some studies about that. Mm -hmm. I know. Yes, yes. Against gender ideology. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. It was very... Mm -hmm. okay. uh, well, we're uh, 15 minutes uh, late on our schedule, but let's try to make it more like uh, what we planned. And now there's lunch for everyone. You are all invited. Okay. Ah, uh, see. Sí. Okay, so.